So, all right. Um, very obviously, Kyokushin guy is on the left. Um, let's see the differences in style once we see the karate guy throw. Ooh, karate guy trying to trip. Very cool. Um, so, wow, this is so interesting. Um, I was not expecting the fight to go this way. I thought the Kyokushin guy was going to try to swing with the Muay Thai guy, but I guess that's... Oh! That was the right... Now, I guess you have to adapt, right? For those of you who do Kyokushin, um, are there... Is there a big focus on takedowns? I didn't realize. Um, anyways. Oof! Muay Thai guy, keep using that teep, man. Ooh, that elbow. Saw an elbow. I was wondering if this were like full Muay Thai rolls or not, but I saw an elbow. So, you know, Kyokushin, they say you can't punch to the face, right? Looks like that elbow cut him, right? He's not used to elbows to the face. Man. So I guess he gets a little break or something. I'm going to jump forward. Okay, so they... They definitely, it's okay. They had a doctor check him. He's okay. All right. So now the Kyokushin guy's like, uh-oh. I don't want to eat another elbow again. By the way, so good, this clear quality. Like, even though it's black and white, it's really clear quality. Okay, temple to temple. Here's the question. I don't know the history of this, but did the Kyokushin guy... Ooh, not 12 to 6 elbows. I wonder if the Kyokushin guy did any kind of, like, study on Muay Thai. I assume they did, right? Ooh. Man. They are just swinging. Hmm. Ooh. I bet the takedown game has... Oh, that elbow looked like it stung. Why'd you cut away from the action? Yeah, that elbow looked like it stung. Ooh. Is that a KO? Yeah, that looks like it's a... That looks like it's a TKO. Yep. They're giving him a 10 count. Yep. Looks like the Muay Thai guy won, so... As he gave him the elbow... So this is just re-watching that part again. As he gave him the elbow, I was saying... I was wondering why the Kyokushin guy wasn't more kind of like careful of elbows. You know? Like, look at that elbow. Ooh, man. I love that they cut away from the audience, but yeah, it's, I mean, oh, wow. Look at that. He actually was loaded away in a stretcher. That's crazy. So this is some highlights, some slow motion kind of recap. Okay. So... Wow, um, we can see that elbows are very important. I think one of the lessons in this fight is elbows are really important. I mean, the Kyokushin guy did pretty well with his takedowns and everything, and his clinch game was okay. It's just that, you know, he I don't think he was used to getting punched or elbowed to the face. So, let's go on to the next one. This one on a Chinese website. This apparently happened in 1966. It's another Kyokushin versus... Um, Muay Thai fight. Um, this time, unlike the previous video, the Kyokushin guy is wearing his gi. And the Muay Thai guy is just classic Muay Thai. So, I wonder if the gi is going to weigh the Kyokushin guy down a little. Less breathing for his skin, right? But anyways, ooh! Okay. This is very different from the previous. So, this was this took place... I'm gonna have to translate this Japanese. It's not 1941. It's some other kind of like metric, but here it is. So that's the Japanese Kyokushin fighter. We're gonna skip ahead, and then the Thai guy does his dance. Okay, here we go. Um, this is interesting. I mean, we know Kyokushin has kicks, right? But like the previous example, is this Kyokushin guy conditioned to punches and kicks to the face? 
That's always what's interesting. And we also know um, from Muay Thai that the first round, they're kind of just fooling around. That first round is just to get people to kind of like, ooh, look at that Kyokushin guy. Did you, did you see a kick? The first round for Muay Thai is just to get them to kind of like place their bets to get in the mood, so to speak. So most Muay Thai guys don't turn it up until second or third round. So I think Kyokushin guy, I don't know if he was told of this. He better be careful. He doesn't want to wear himself out in the first round. I mean, he's a black belt. He's a professional. So let's hope he in general knows not to go overboard in the first round. Just dance along, play along. All right, look at that. They're not using full force. But, ooh, Muay Thai guy took, oh, ho, 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 the Kyokushin guy, look at that jump kick. Okay, so, I think what we see already is that Kyokushin guy is not used to punches to his face. He, he's, he's, you know, putting his hands up more, but Muay Thai guy, you see, protecting his face a lot more with his gloves. Kyokushin guy holding his nose. Oof. This is really interesting. So this is still the first round. Notice the Kyokushin guy trying multiple times to block a kick, right? Not checking. Trying multiple times to block a kick, you know? In Kung Fu, Karate, Taekwondo and stuff, they train more kick blocking. It's because those kicks are more snappy instead of like baseball bats. I think you got to be careful blocking a Muay Thai or left weight guy's kicks. Might break your hand, break your wrist, break your arms, forearms. So... Kyokushin guy looks like, um, I was going to say he looks southpaw, but he might, he might not favor um, a direction. Like, Muay Thai guy is classic orthodox, right? He's very orthodox, but doing the switch kicks. Um, Kyokushin guy looks like he switches between southpaw and orthodox, and he's also more, like, sideways. His, his, if you look at Kyokushin guy, um, his legs are more far apart than Muay Thai guy's. So that's the end of the first round. So I think second round, we're probably going to see Muay Thai guy step it up a little. And we're, we're probably going to see a slaughter. Once the Muay Thai guy really steps it up, assuming my interpretation is correct, the Kyokushin guy is going to get destroyed if unless he steps it up too. So it's so great this footage exists, guys. So... Oh, well, that was a kick to the face. It's interesting, guys, because the um, the Muay Thai guy throws that switch kick a lot, right? But you'd think the Kyokushin guy would start seeing that and, you know, get out of the range. Hmm. For those of you that train Kyokushin, do you guys check kicks? I'm really curious. I haven't seen the Kyokushin guy try to check a kick yet. He, he keeps trying to block. But, you know, I, I haven't really seen the Muay Thai guy check kicks that much either. I, I've been really mostly watching the Kyokushin guy. I'm just curious. I mean, we all know how Muay Thai guys fight. So, ooh, ow, ow, ow. We all know that, um, I lost my train of thought. I don't know what I was going to say. We all know that what, but. Hmm. Oof. Oof. Was, oh, I thought that was the end of the second round. Man, it's like a ticking time bomb. I don't real—I don't think the Kyokushin guy realizes this Thai guy's a ticking time bomb. He's like, he's not dialing it up yet. One thing Kyokushin guy is pretty good at is always trying to circle. He's not trying to, he's not getting stuck to the side of the ring or getting caught in a pocket, right? So, that's something I noticed. I mean, Kikushin, they spar a lot, so... He knows not to get into the corner. Oh, so that's in the second round. Okay. Man, such a cool little piece of martial arts history. Wow. <laughs> the ref's like, it is... I'm getting stressed out because Kikushin guy's gonna get knocked out. Guys! I'm probably just being really biased right now. As far as we know, maybe the, the Kyokushin guy wins. I'm just... Ouch. Woo! Nice, nice. So... So now Kyokushin guy... Um, 
I don't know where it's going with that. I'm getting confused. This is not continuous. This seems to be more... Ooh! How did... How did... Muay Thai guy land on top. Man, fire the cameraman. So, okay, we saw a Thai guy check a kick. So that's ne. I heard the Japanese side say. So that's like, oh, that's what it is. That's what so that's name. Oh, Kyukushin guy's stuck in the corner. Notice him drop his hands. Man, this is dangerous, man. This is dangerous having your hand this low. Oh, like, so that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. It's dangerous having your hand this low, man. Oh. So it looks like they're giving him a standing count. He says he's okay. Yeah, now his hand's gonna be up. His hand's gonna be up. I uh, see. Ah, there we go. Keep, yeah, keep doing that. Keep throwing them. Look at that. As the Kyokushin guy gets sluggish, his kicks start getting checked more. Oof. His kicks are gonna get caught and checked more as he gets tired and he gets more dazed. Ah, oh, yeah. It's a, it's a, oof. Oh, be careful. Yeah, good. Get out of that corner. Man, Muay Thai guy's turning it up, man. Oh, a good little kick to Muay Thai guy's face. Woo! Um, in Thai culture, at least in this era, kicking, like, teeping someone or front kicking, push kicking someone to the face is considered disrespectful. So, it's because um, um the mats are dirty, right? So, you're, you're basically putting dirt on someone's face. Wow, Kyukushin guy has heart, man, but do you really need to do this? You kind of know your weaknesses. I get it. There's like a matter of national pride and it's like for your own culture. Oh, you're eating knees now. Ow. There's like for your for your culture and for your art, but live to fight another day, man. Come back. Learn how to check kicks. Learn how to like keep your hands up. That's all he needs to do, man. He just, he's not used to. Oh, that was the end of that round. Dude, the, if it gets... Dude, this is really bad. If it's getting to the fourth round, dude, Muay Thai guy's gonna beat him. Muay Thai guy's gonna beat him, man. This is not even funny anymore. Oh my goodness. Look at that. I mean, we've noticed this throughout the match, but Muay Thai guy's the, always the one pressuring the Kyokushin guy. Oof! Ah, okay. Catch the leg and hit him. Hmm. Oh, he's getting stuck in the corner, man. He's not. He's not as agile as in the early rounds. When look at this, he's not circling off anymore. He doesn't know how to get out of the corner. Ooh! Stay in the center. Keep circling. Keep circling. Ugh! God, he's just taking punishment all over his arm. And his, his um, ribs. Oof. Oof. Looks like Rob wants to come in to watch too. Rob, Rob's excited. We're watching a Kyukushin guy. One of the first oh, Kyukushin dang. versus um, Muay Thai oh. matches. Yeah, I gotta try to do a judo throw just then. Looks like it. Um, this is round four. And the the Kyukushin guy already ate dang. a few big... Yeah, he Those is Muay getting Thai destroyed. Yeah. Nasty. Yeah. Oh, whoa. He tried to do a jump. Yep. Yeah. So... What we've been noticing so far, Rob, is because it doesn't seem like the Kyukushin guy knows how to check kicks, oh, yeah. his hands are too low. Boy, that new that Muay Thai guy I guess, is throwing bombs. I guess that was a knockout. I guess that they, they didn't even show it. Yeah. Wow. They censored but that there. Like, I guess that was a knockout. I bet you he didn't get up for a while. Yeah, he, he probably did not get up for a while. Wow. What year was this? Uh, this was 19... Depending on the source, it was either 1966 or 1964. One, it, it might have been one of the earliest. The Chinese sources say it's 1966, but I've heard this might be 1964. But yeah, the skinny ties, that's definitely the 60s. 60s, yeah. Um, so, um, I'll show you, uh, Rob, since you're here, I'll show you some of the earlier, when when um the Kyushin guy wasn't dazed yet. Ooh. Yeah, I know, I know. Like, mm. you're seeing him after he took a big head kick. He's throwing so. everything yeah. into those. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, nasty. I know. 
I know. Oh, I know. I know. He's just softening him up. Yeah. What um what I learned from talking to Muay Thai guys mm. is that the first two rounds they're usually the Thai guys are just stalling. Yeah. They're waiting for you to punch yourself out, uh-huh. and that's Ooh. what this Muay Thai Ooh. guy did. Yeah, this is the fourth round. I, I I told the audience before you came, Rob, that if it gets the fourth round, the the Muay Thai guy's gonna like that's his round. Mm-hmm. He usually tries to win by the fourth round, so the fifth round he's chilling. But like, man, his knees are nasty. Yeah, yeah, and he didn't even use that many knees in the beginning. That's the crazy part. What I find really interesting about this Muay Thai guy is that he, the way he approaches, mm-hmm. um, the way he approaches is interesting because it's almost, um, it's not the traditional Muay Thai stance that I'm used to, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, which is a little bit more squared away, mm-hmm. but uh, but he, he definitely shouldered off. It's mm-hmm. really interesting. He sort of shimmied towards like uh, like I would see it in like a normal boxing match. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I see. So look at look at round one. You'll see. Like I I saw immediately in round one. Like the the Muay Thai guy kind of. You see, he's more just he's more just like having fun. Yeah. And the Kyokushin guy's just going all out. It's like. Yeah, he's just sort of he's just dancing. And yeah. That's, that's you know part of the Muay Thai tradition is yeah. to sort of start by dancing. Yeah. And it's like the the first round, especially from what I learned from talking to Muay Thai people, is that. People are placing bets right now. Uh, so the yeah. first round is just to get people to finish placing their bets. You yeah. kind of like give this this crowd this sense of like, oh my god, it might be a close match. That's mm-hmm. why you don't fight too hard. You don't make it too one-sided the first round. Let them get invested. Yeah, let them get invested. Exactly. And what I noticed immediately that is... Muay Thai plum. Yeah, Man. the plum. You just took them off right off balance. <laughs> that was pretty good. Yeah. But, but yeah. again, you're expending so much force doing those jump kicks. Yeah. And so one thing I noticed watching it from he the, actually started to check a kick there. Oh, uh, the the Kyokushin guy. Yeah, finally. I guess so. But you can tell he's not used to it because I kept noticing like he would he would keep trying to block these right, kicks right. by the Muay Thai guy, and he was just the Kyokushin was like hurting his arms so much. Oh, body shot. Yeah. So, mm. like he would keep see he keeps oh, trying to block the yeah. kicks, man. Yeah, those arms are gonna be dead. Yeah. And then besides that, Kyokushin guy kept lowering his hands because he's so used to blocking kicks. Yeah. He's not used to checking kicks. So this like Kyokushin guy is legit, but he's at this point he's going, you know, in his mind he's like, I've messed up. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He's like, I'm not equipped to handle yeah, this type yeah. of fighting. Exactly. Like, I'm I'm equipped to handle my style, but I'm not equipped to handle this style. Yeah, yeah. So it's so interesting to to watch how it starts. And like, see, you see the Kyokushin guy at first when he's not dazed yet, he's very good about circling off. Right. He's never getting stuck in, in the corner like he did yeah. in round four. He's very good about circling off. Mm-hmm. But I guess it's it's like, you know, you get hit enough in the face, you're, you're even going to forget that. Like, like one of the first things you practice, I think, in, in boxing, I don't know about kickboxing, but in boxing is circle off, circle off. You're always getting that into your mind to circle yeah. off. Yeah. But it's like you see by round four, he's not doing it anymore. So it's like, I guess that's one of the things that goes very quickly when you get hit in the face. You only can go linearly after a while. Yeah. So round two, you see, he Muay Thai guy is still kind of just playing around. Pretty good jab there from the Kyokushin guy. Mm-hmm. So. Oof, those yeah. leg kicks. Those yeah. uh, high kicks are nasty. And the other thing I noticed, Rob, um, if you look at how Kyokushin guy stands, he's yeah. much wider than the Muay Thai guy. Yeah, yeah. And so... It's interesting that the Muay Thai guy didn't kick him in the leg as much as right. I thought. Like the Muay Thai guy would have taken advantage of that. Yeah, I think that what he's trying to do is he's trying to take away the power of his arms. Oh, like he keeps on kicking him into the arms, and I think what he's what he's trying to do is inflame his arms with with, with so much blood oh. that it becomes very heavy handed. Makes like, sense. Very difficult to hold your hands. Up. Yeah, and that's why we saw by the fourth round the Kyokushin guy literally couldn't do anything with his arms. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. I never thought about it like that, Rob, but you're right. It's like, okay, well, I can always attack his legs later. Let's just beat his arms first. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's why in Muay Thai you have to create cl- glancing blows. Yeah, yeah. You have to uh, let them slide off of your chest. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. Yeah, Ooh. Ooh, Yeah. that was one part where the Thai guy, um, he slipped. 
that's what um, Lance was trying to teach me. He was trying to teach when, when I lower my elbows to protect against a body shot, how do I get the punch to glance off me? Mm -hmm. That was a cool lesson that Lance gave me. Mm -hmm. Guys, um, Lance from Santa Monica Striking. So, if you guys are curious, go search it up. Um, yeah, it's a... Uh, I, I was also mentioning um, the Kyokushin guy kind of switches stances more. He doesn't have, like, a committed southpaw orthodox. Unlike the Thai guy, the Thai guy's just like, I'm orthodox. <laughs> I think that's very interesting. Yeah. Because usually if you're good fighting both orthodox and southpaw, you should, like, have an advantage. But I guess in this case it didn't help him as much as I thought it would. What the Muay Thai guys are really good at mm -hmm. is... He throws kicks mm -hmm. to create openings. Uh, so he, he'll throw a kick just to get the Kyokushin guy to drop his hands or to try and block the kick. Mm. And as soon as he tries to block the kick, he'll follow up with a, something directly to his face. He'll throw mm. a punch to the face. I see. That was a pretty good little takedown. Yeah. But then <laughs> my tie guy's like, I can do it back to you. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. That's so interesting. And I guess something... Oh, oof, yeah, I know. Kick. You're you're gonna see the head kick soon that took down that like days the days the Kyokushin guy once once I saw the Kyokushin guy take the head kick in round three I knew it was over like they, I if I were like trying to protect the safety I would have just ended it at the end of the third round and given it to the Muay Thai guy but you know it, the, the the fight doesn't work that way but you'll see it very soon that head kick was gnarly almost talk, there did they talk about their credentials at all um I forgot but all I know is. This Kyokushin guy ended up... I think he, he created K1 because of this. Oh, wow. So this is like a historical fight. He lost, and he's like, I want to learn how to beat Muay Thai guys in the future. Right there, right there. Oh, yeah. That gnarly... Oh, yeah. yeah. When I saw that, I was like, it's over for Kyokushin guy. Yeah, he's, he's, on, he's out on his feet. Yeah. Look at that. Look yeah. at that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he still, he still has not figured out where he's at. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's really good about switching his stances. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty impressive. Like he, he definitely has equal strikes from both yeah, sides. Yeah. Whereas the Muay Thai guy is just he's just about blunt power. Yeah. yeah. So he's like, I'm just gonna keep this orthodox stance. Yeah. Blasting it. Yeah, just blasting. Man, yeah, it's yeah. Again guys, um I'm not saying that one style is better than the other, but in this fight you can tell that the Muay Thai fighter is using Muay Thai much more effectively than the Kyokushin guy is using Kyokushin. Oh, um, there what you saw is the Kyokushin guy push kicked the Muay Thai guy in the face. Mm -hmm. So I think why the Muay Thai guy threw him that far is because that's it, it's disrespectful in Muay Thai culture to do that. Yeah, yeah. So anytime you try, and, anytime you attack the top of the head, it's very disrespectful. Yeah. Yeah, it's so interesting that the the Japan side didn't didn't just throw in the towel. Now now you're just like giving them brain damage. Yeah, but you know there's so much. Yeah, so much, on the so much pride. Exactly, that's what I was saying too. I mean, this dude, this dude is, um, I would say he's definitely got some traditional boxing as well. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. he's obviously his main thing is Muay Thai. Yeah, but. I would I would assume that he's probably had some traditional yeah. training as well. I think so because you know the West has been around in that area for very long, right? Yeah. So like a lot of them were doing savat and boxing mm -hmm. for for many hundreds of years. Yeah, he's so, probably watching like Muhammad Ali yeah. and stuff. Yeah, it's not like in Japan where Japan basically it was only during the American occupation that they really got Western culture. Mm -hmm. You know, the Admiral Dewey went in. And like Japan's like, okay, we better catch up. And then they're like, we're gonna be Asian, but we're gonna like modernize our technology. So, mm -hmm. giving everyone a history lesson. But this is about when when Rob came in Ooh. initially, and you see like how Daisy is. He, he's not circling off anymore. Right. He's just getting stuck in the corner. He doesn't know yeah. what to do anymore. Like I feel like that's a sign. Like if I were judging this, I'd be like, okay, let's just stop it now. I get yeah. it. Some prize might get hurt. Some people might get mad at me, but I'm just protecting yeah. the fighter. He's, he's humiliating him is what it is. Oh, uh, uh, makes sense. He's, he's putting on a show. Yeah. And also, um, a lot of people think that, you know, if they're not getting hit to the head, that it's okay. But uh, every time you get hit to the body yeah. like that, even if you're blocking it, it's still a shock to the brain. Yeah, totally. Yeah, it, it's all connected. Yeah. You know, there's a shock. Exactly. It's a shock. It, you know, it's, it's hard to show um, without being on camera, but like, 
it it it, it doesn't it vibrates it yeah. vibrates throughout your body. It creates a nervous system. Yeah. Like alert. Yeah. Yeah. And we're about to see that last part again. It was a hook. It was a right hook. Yeah. yeah. It was almost. I think it was a little bit behind the head. Behind too. the head. Yeah. Potentially. So, I think. They ended this very well, sort of not sh not gratu gr gr gratuitous, yeah, not not gratuitous violence right here. Just like, okay, this is what happened. But also, I think he was probably hit a little bit too far behind the head, uh -huh. behind the ear at least. Uh huh. But um, it goes to show you that I think the real reason here he, he lost was also fatigue. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Fatigue makes the KO much easier. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, Thai guy, look at the Thai guy showing respect. So, guys, we just watched two very, very historical, very, very historical Muay Thai matches. So, um, this 41.6.21, this is what I'm trying to figure out because I don't think it took place in 1941. So, what does this S41 mean? Because it could be June 21st. But what does S41 mean? Like, that's what I'm trying to figure out. And I don't read Japanese. I'm just, you know, none of these Hanji characters, Hanzi, these characters, they borrowed from Chinese. Like, none of these tell me what this means. So, all I can all I can figure out is that the Chinese here, up here, says it's 1966. But part of me on YouTube, if you look at this fight on YouTube, they say 1964. So, I do Subscribers not... Subscribers who are super sleuths. Yeah. Please. When does your help? Yeah, let us know. Like, when exactly did this take place? Because I just don't think this took place in 1966. Like, you know, here's another reason why. Um, this fight that we watched earlier, this fight took place in 1964. Mm -hmm. On top of that, the um, the Japanese k karate fighter does very well, does way better. It looks like in 1964, the Japanese already did research on, on this, whereas... In 66, a guy didn't do research. So it could be that this guy just didn't do his research or this is the wrong date. Because I'll just show you um, a little bit here, Rob. Like, look at the karate guy. Knows how to go temple to temple. Yeah. So, like, this is this karate guy definitely, you know, it's not his first time fighting a Muay Thai guy. Also, you never know, like, where he's traveled to. True. And, and you know, there's all those, you know, things you can't put down on paper, like his heart, you know. You, mm -hmm. know, you don't know what his background is. True, true. So I'm gonna. The guy's name is Kenji. So he was one of Masoyama's students, I believe. Um, Masoyama's the founder of um, Kyokushin. So it looks like at least this guy, this Japanese guy fighting uh, Rawe Deshitai, mm -hmm. he was one of Masoyama's students. See, look at this. This says it was 1964. Mm. Um. Oh, okay. So this was. This I guess it is nineteen sixty four then. Mm. So now the question is: This one that Rob and I watched was this nineteen sixty? It could have been nineteen sixty six, but I don't know. There's a lot of like sleuthing for everyone. So I'm trying to see the history. So that it looks like I might have been wrong about that person started K1 after losing. Guys, if you have any more information on these two matches, please let us know. Again, very historical footage. Two very hardcore styles of martial arts meeting twice in the 60s. And, you know, in one case, the guy does a little better than the other guy. But, you know, he still, in this case, it was a it was a kick, I think, that, that took our karate guy down. I already forgot what happened in this fight because the other one's so different. Oh, it was an elbow. It was oh, an elbow. Yeah, it was boy. an elbow. Yeah, it was oh, an elbow. Nasty. Yeah. So, um, I just realized, Rob, that I'm, gl I'm glad I showed this to you because in this 19, quote-unquote 1966 fight, we didn't see any elbows. It might have been banned. This one might have been no elbows. Uh, I just realized because this one, I kept saying, um, the karate guy better watch out for elbows, and then it happened twice. He got elbowed uh, twice. Like, that was the second gnarly elbow. He got a, a gnarly elbow from before. So this one, we didn't see any elbow, which makes me think this one said no elbows. Yeah. And yet the Muay Thai guy still dominated at the end. So and that's a scary thing. Yeah. It's like the element of surprise yeah. is the biggest, the biggest asset. Yeah. 
Like if you come into a fight with something that the other person has not seen yeah. and doesn't know how to like handle it, it's crazy. Yeah, exactly. So guys, man, this was Fight Commentary Breakdowns. Two of the coolest pieces of historical martial arts style versus style ever. So let me know what you think. Let us know what you think. Muay Thai versus Kyokushin, Muay Thai versus Karate, etc. Can a modern Kyokushin or a modern Saito Kaikon or a modern... Okinawan karate guy beat a Kyokush, sorry, beat a, um, a Muay Thai guy. What do you guys think? What about Lethway? You add in headbutts, you know. Could could a, could a Muay Thai guy beat a Lethway guy? Now we're opening some can of worms. <laughs> 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 this is my commentary breakdowns. Bye-bye, guys.